The next layer on our agenda is the network layer, layer 3. But before we dive into the network layer, let's just make a couple of general remarks. When you have to study this work, I strongly suggest that you use mind maps because on every layer you will find a couple of key concepts. On layer 4, we mentioned reliability as one of the key concepts. And then when we spoke about reliability, that naturally split into reliability prior to communication, during communication, and terminating the communication channel. In the case of the network layer, there are two primary concepts that you have to become familiar with. And that is routing. And if you want to root it something, you need to talk about addresses. As we've just said, routing is one of the key concerns of the network layer. When one thinks about routing, you may think about something like an app that tells you where, how to get to a certain destination while driving along. And using that routing app or that navigation app, you will typically do two things. At some point, the route will be determined and then you will typically follow the instructions. And what typically happens on layer Three is that it follows the instructions. The determination of the route is something that happens elsewhere. It is an application layer protocol, layer 7 protocol. We discussed this when we discussed layer 7 protocols, but let's say a couple of things about those protocols. In the TCP IP context, there are two protocols that determine routes that are really popular. And that's the Root Information Protocol, Routing Information Protocol, RIP, and the Open Shortest Path First Protocol. As we said earlier, the routing protocols such as RIP and OSPF are not the primary concern of Layer 3. The primary example that we will use is the internet protocol IP and we will have quite a lot to say about IP. To give you examples that are not as common anymore let's quickly mention two examples just so that you have a, a feeling for other protocols that may exist. One of the old routing protocols was known as bang, or used um, technique that was known as bang addressing. So what you would do is if you are here and you are connected to a couple of networks or a couple of computers, you are at computer A and you have them linked to B, C, and D, then you may say, take this message that I want to send, and I'm at A, so I can send it to B. And then I'm going to use an explanation mark, which, exclamation mark, which is read as bang. So the route to get to D would you would specify an email address like this, for example, B bang C bang D, and that gets you to D. Uh, clearly, that means you as a user have to remember uh, the routes via the network, which is typically very hard to do. So what you as an organization would do is to remember a route to some very well-known machine. Let's call that a very important machine, NB, NB1 or NB2, there could be many of them. And uh, what you would do is remember the route uh, 
to get to such an imported machine. Now, if someone else is, for example, sitting on the network over here, let's say that's X, Y, and Z, they will uh, advertise their email addresses or other addresses as how to get from well-known machines to their machine. So let's say this very important machine knows about X and the computer Z will then advertise that to get to it, you can go from the very important machine to X, to Y, and to Z. So if I now want to send an email to a user, uh, on computer Z, I would simply take my route, little bit of the route that I know how to get uh, from, so B, C, D, to this very important machine, and I will then take the published address uh, that takes it from this very important machine, X, Y, Z, and then I will say bang, uh, that says to user U. That's where the email should be delivered. Now this was used in the very, very early days when people didn't really even think about the global network. It was known in the context of the UUCP, Unix to Unix copy systems. It wasn't used in the 1970s. No one uses bang addressing anymore. But here you can see how it is used. It is an example of source routing where when you send out a packet, you tell it which route to follow. And we will encounter source routing again, even though we won't encounter bang addressing again. Our other example is still in use in quite a couple of places. It is the protocol that is used in ATM. Asynchronous transfer mode. It's not anything to do with autobanks. Uh, this is a protocol that sends uh, tiny packets of data, uh, 48 bytes plus 5 bytes of header, it's 53 bytes intended for use in multimedia context and so on where you want to constant throughput. So telephone companies and those sort of companies uh, would often uh, support this. What makes uh, it interesting is that initially if you have a couple of nodes that need to talk to one another you will send out a pathfinder packet and that pathfinder packet will establish a path between these nodes back and forth and uh, at every node you will basically say if something comes in via link one send it out via link five uh, and then when it arrives at the next machine, at that machine's link 7, you will say send it out via link 1. And so on. that's the way uh, you, you establish this path. So that's part of the root determination. And then the routing algorithm uh, that really operates on layer 3 is at every node when something comes in via specific interface, specific channel, you just send it out via another specific interface, another channel. This is a sort of topic that we would have spent hours talking about only a year or five ago, but now we will leave it there and not explore it in more detail. As I said earlier, our primary example of a layer 3 protocol would be IP, the Internet Protocol. For many years, that meant only one thing. It meant version 4 that we nowadays would probably denote as IPv4, to be explicit. IPv4 has a couple of problems and we will talk about them as we go along. I guess for the past 20 years or so people have been saying that IPv4 is broken, it will be replaced within the next five years and clearly it has not happened, but it is happening right now. So the protocol that was designed uh, to replace it 
was for a long time known as IP Next Generation. Uh, also many years ago, it was decided that that one would be numbered 6. So IP6 is the new IP protocol that is being deployed. It will still take years for it to take over the entire internet, but to see it actively being used, well, you can look at the internet right now. For those who are wondering, there was an experimental protocol IP version 5, which was never used in practice, and that explains the jump from IP version 4 to IP version 6. We will talk about IP version 4 addresses in our next video.